Hey listeners, powered up by Mazer Group, this is the Turn and Dirt Podcast. I'm your host, John Mazer. Hi, Andrew. Hey, John. How are you doing? Good yourself. Very well, thank you. It's great to have you here. You know what? It's been a long time coming. Yes, and, it is. Uh, yeah. yeah. Very yeah. excited for this. You're the first family member on. Uh, I always, uh, when I started, I thought dad was going to be like episode 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're talking like episode 20 maybe now. It could be 25, could be 30. Sought after episode, but just when I'm ready. I feel, I feel like 25 is a good yeah. number for it. I, You know what? It's just like a... 25th anniversary yeah, 20, I like that, 20, yeah. you know yeah, yeah. it's just one of those things so when you have the bit first big anniversary as you said yeah it's like a quarter century and yeah, 25 is a good number it is yeah. yeah what do you want to talk about today well really you're the host here so i am the host um, i am anything the host. you'd like to it's up to me it is always is so we talk about all things agriculture and a few other notable topics but i think we should start with our introduction or maybe how should I word this our first memories of the business so obviously Mazer or I guess it was Brandon implements 1959 and then Mazer implements came along in 1975 do you know the exact date there I want to say it's either 74 75 yeah but around around there there, yeah Mazer implements came along and then like so early 90s is really when the memories started to come in for me Going to the shop with dad, we had the golf cart there. There was an ever popular minivan go kart. Producer Jay, we had a go kart that it was, uh, it had a fiberglass shell of a minivan. With a, it was blue, uh, white and blue with a, uh, a cartoon vulture on the side. Like, how, how fast does this thing go? Not fast. Like, I mean, we were six For years kids, old. Okay, yeah, 20, yeah. 25 yeah. kilometers per hour kind of deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? you're, about, you're about 60 years too early on the minivan, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, well the, body, the body was like one of those old GMC. Um, it was Ford. I think it said oh, Ford it, it on Ford it. Ford one yeah. with the flat front, really short hood. Like, nice. you know, the ones that uh, guys used to, like, soup up and put shag carpet in. Yeah. You know, one yeah. of those. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. One of yeah. Those, the yeah. guy, the, the, the van, it's like exact replica of the van on old school that they pick up all the <laughs> initiates. Yeah. yeah all the right. initiates. Yeah, with. yeah, that's exactly it. So, yeah. anyway, my memories are the golf cart and the minivan ripping mm-hmm. around the lot, yeah. causing ruckus there. Do, um, you, do you remember when they had it? Was it the TX sixty six sort of release in thirty six thir- thirty six in yeah. the yard and like the uh, Pepsi Taste Challenge was there. Yep, and we had so many customers there just like here for this release, and you yeah. and I were ripping around on the golf cart. In the yes, back. we you were know, like. <laughs> Dad, dad's hosting an event here yeah and uh johnny's driving and uh took a hard right yeah and i wasn't holding on so i come tumbling out of this golf cart and get a rock or something cut the top of my head bust his head so wide open you go get dad and then there's dad running me across the parking lot with my shirt off with my shirt on top of my head soaking up the blood from it <laughs> so that that was that was an interesting time but yeah no i do yeah that was one of the memories i sure. remember that it was the tx release in north america and i have my oh my god i'm such an idiot i remember being on the golf cart and like dale shepherd doing a like address the audience probably a couple hundred people in the audience and me going (laughs) ripping right in front of him between him and the audience (laughs) on the golf cart (laughs) oh my god i'm and then dad come running over yeah 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 anyway that that situation was handled and we moved on and and i bet bet your dad stayed real skinny chasing after oh man oh you never see you never seen a dad run faster before (laughs) oh i know (laughs) but if he's running that fast you know you're in trouble yeah and you know around that time then we got to well you would have been i guess 13 i would have been 11 and we started working in wash bay yep and i yep. always remember the uh, mac tool truck coming by oh man that and the snap-on tool truck yeah like i don't know if you've ever seen one of these tool trucks uh producer jay but like literally it's like the old school milk uh milk delivery trucks like a pure later truck yeah, if yeah. you will yep. but literally Big like box. the roof the walls everything is lined with tools like individually like place tools mm-hmm. it's like we had no business whatsoever buying tools no but we no. wanted to go into these trucks and just check everything out ask a million questions and yeah really annoy the sales guy and, <laughs> yeah. and then and, and john and i finally got this great idea that we're like you know what we need we're gonna buy something we're gonna buy something here so what do we buy is we buy like an air powered die grinder like <laughs> we're, we're for we're, a good tool to start with the, right? And, and, right we're 13 and 11 years old yeah. like, what the fuck are we doing with a 
air power die grinder. <laughs> right. And it was a genius idea. Like oh, we're in I the know. truck, we were so pumped. What are you going to do with the die grinder? You don't even own an air compressor. No, <laughs> no, no. And it was like that day, it was awesome. And like, I think we both woke up the next morning going like, what the fuck did we do? Because it was like 200 bucks or 300 bucks or something. It, it, this was in like 1992. Yes. Right? Yeah, which so is like $8,000 yeah. yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. But like, yeah. So anyway, I had to like... I remember phoning the guy. I think it was Mac Tools that we bought it off of. And I remember like shaking on him. I was like, I don't think we're going to be able to buy that die grinder. He's like, oh, that's fine. I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> right. He this knew what was going to happen. Oh, yeah. He's like, yeah. you're 11 and 13 year old coming yeah. and buying stuff like that. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so there was sure. the tool trucks. Um, yes, we started in the wash bay. Those jobs literally lasted probably three to four days. And then we take two weeks off and go to the lake. And then we come back. And do it again mm -hmm. and then go to the lake and then school started again. So, yeah, like that shop was like a part of our summers forever. Yep. Yeah. Most people so. aren't working at 11 and 13, though. No. No. Nope. <laughs> That's nope. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then, then there were the the um, extracurricular jobs that we had to do, which is walking back and forth through fields, picking rocks. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And that yeah. was good bonding time. It that was. That was a uh, bonding time. Yeah. 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 So, so we went back and forth from the farm just outside of Brandon. It's in Kemney, Manitoba. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was just odd jobs like that. Sometimes you get friends involved. Sometimes you wouldn't. But, yeah, mm -hmm. those are fun times, too. I remember, I, like, in Sarnia, Ontario, I, I got asked at 11 years old to go pick rocks at a farm. And they lined us all up in a row. Oh, yeah. And you just walk mm -hmm. forward picking up rocks. And, like, yes. I just had no concept of, like, is this rock? big enough to pick like <laughs> i was just grabbing like whatever and i never got called back so <laughs> there, 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 that, there was no spec sheet given to you on, on yeah, no. which you know like the size of your thumb you know like we're all different age. there's a 45 year old and then an eight year old yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> what that like that my section of crop didn't grow guaranteed on there's that too farm. many rocks there's just yeah it's rock filled <laughs> but but you did have a nice uh truck full of gravel as yeah you know, exactly. <laughs> oh he's just scooping up with his hands like yeah. uh, piles Sifting. of dirt there's got to be a rock in there somewhere <laughs> yeah. there's no sifter yeah, yeah that's right the dirt came with me yeah. yeah oh that's awesome oh goodness so there was yeah so there was work at the farm there and then uh we got to the age where i was able or we were both able to drive but your allergies really kicked in at the farm it did yeah they yeah did. yeah so we'd go out there and it would be caught be harvest season uh I'd be dri driving a grain truck or whatever andrew would be with me but all of a sudden he starts sneezing and not stop so he'd have to go back so actually fast forward i always thought i'd work at the farm and ironically andrew took a position at the farm and ran the family farm for i thought is it 12 years uh 11 years it was, 11, yeah, 11 years, years yeah. yeah so i'm kind of jumping ahead so we'll get mm -hmm. back to that but our official our official like employment start date was after our first year out of uh university and so i uh yeah we acquired mooseman at that point mm -hmm. and so we were driving out there we, yeah, we made the commute every single day and it was cleaning out the dealership and yeah giving it a facelift and yeah once that was done, I got a title uh, named Special Projects, whatever that means. But it was like anything from a dealer, like doing the stuff at the Mooseman dealership to uh, equipment transfers. I'd haul balers to another dealer or whatever. And you started in IT. I did. Yep. Yeah, I did. You worked with Ryan. I did. Yeah. Did you yeah. enjoy that? Yeah, you know what? Um, I guess it was my first big foray into the dealership and the organization and, you know, traveling around to all the different dealerships and, you know, at setting up computer systems, server management, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. it was great in the sense that I got to meet everybody. Yeah. You like it? Yeah. Literally, I was at three different dealerships or two different dealerships a week yeah and yeah it was a it was a great experience yeah for sure and be able to spend it with ryan too yeah. and he and he's still with us he as is still our, with us uh, yeah. manager of it for the group so yeah that's good he's yeah. doing something right yeah he absolutely is the guy has a the guy has a language for computers i've never seen before like just, and yeah like i mean, I, I just yeah i did i i i have the i have the surface knowledge of computers but like the co like coding and like all that because it maybe i don't know if he can code but like he just knows how to talk to a computer he does yeah it's crazy yeah great, great teacher to have well it's funny like because like we, both of us are good friends with them yeah. and like you'd never expect that kind of techiness out of him no not like at all you're just to first meet him but no. yeah no he's he's fantastic yeah and he's yeah. a true like 
yeah, computer techie guy. Like it's not so. Yeah. So that was your first position, mm-hmm. kind of first, yeah, first position within the company, and then you went to a business manager role or business Assist- assistant business Assist- manager, assistant uh, business manager, or yeah, uh, assistant to the business manager for watching the go. office. Yeah. You know. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. I work with Blake Patterson. Yeah. Um, and you know, what? again, learning the ins and outs of the yeah. financing and inventory and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And like, it's, again, there are so many facets to the dealership and the organization that you, yeah. at this point in my life, I'm just kind of trying to find what's good and what's, what's what I really like. Yeah. So yeah. And that's the way you got to yeah. do it. Cause I mean, like you said, Andy, like there's just so many, there's so many t- moving parts in this complex dealership yeah. company yeah so it's good to see it's good uh yeah good to get uh ed, or good to get experience in it all oh for sure yeah 100%. so yeah. then the calling for the farm came and yeah crazy because i mean this is where i like i mean i always thought i was going to go to the farm um at that point i was uh, heavy into the construction stuff and and loving uh loving life and yeah don was coming up on retirement correct yeah so that's that's kind of where it started from and uh uh, our farm manager at the time don lowen uh was wanting to retire and he's trying to figure out you know like what we're gonna do so at that point dad approached me and said you know don's looking to settle down a little bit so um would you want to try taking this on and i said you know what why not i'm looking for a challenge and did that so and that turned into a 11 year uh, stint there yeah (laughs) and you know, um, even today, like I'm, I'm, there's days where I just absolutely miss it. Yeah. I miss being on the farm. Absolutely. Well, I mean, um, it's a great, it's a great place to work. And the transitions that happened there, um, because as you know, like we were in potatoes for 20 years Yeah, and we were, um, we we're suppliers for both uh, Simplot and McCain. So we were growing the Mac fries. And, um, at that point we, there was another, employee which became my my managing partner which was ed waldner yeah so he took care of the potatoes and then i did all the grain farming all the grain and yeah so i mean it was um it was good you know when you have such a tight new a tight-knit group of employees and people you build these relationships and these this uh, this camaraderie between yeah. each other and uh yeah it was it was a lot of fun and then fast forward him and i ended up um buying a uh, farm together which was key river farms yeah and yeah it it, it worked in conjunction with sundance yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah um for the potato and crop rotation and everything else yeah and irrigation and like yeah because we ended up i think we were 28 pivots is what it was that's for a the lot irrigation. Yeah. yeah so and it was just so much going on with uh, yeah. running and maintaining those 24 hours a day and everything else yeah but um yeah um I guess uh, fast forwarding a little bit more from that is um, Ed went off to do other uh, other ventures and just the size of the farm was <clears throat> a little bit too much to take care of with one guy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we ended up selling the selling the potato operation, which was located in Rivers. Yeah. And our home base was in Kemney by Brandon. Yeah. And so we didn't have that jaunt going back and forth and dealing with the irrigation and which is nice. It's yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so got back into good old wheat and canola. Yeah. And that, yeah, that, back that, to the roots of yeah. it. Cause that's where kind of the farm started. And then maybe we'll just go back a little bit, Andy. Like I remember talking about like, you know, our first time at, you know, our memories and then first time at the dealership. Like I remember like the first year of potatoes, like, yeah. the, like the last year of potatoes, how many, how many acres did you guys sow? Do you remember? Um, like, at our peak, we we're about fifteen hundred acres of potatoes, yeah. and then towards the end, we we're about that um, seven hundred fifty to yeah. eight fifty around there. And it's all by contract, right? So, like, I mean, that like the did the uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Did the suppliers or like did McCain like they contracted the size of the size of the sowable acres? Did they not? Or did we det- did we determine that? Well, they 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 they're the ones who uh, created contract for us, right? Yeah, and uh, that all depended on uh, soil type. Like they they dictated soil type. I got gotcha. Dictated irrigated irrigated acres. Yeah. Um, and towards the end, it was uh you know like when when you're delivering contract, it's basically comes from the from the processor himself. So yeah. we were the furthest west producing potato producer yeah. in Manitoba. So we were kind of getting like the 
oddball delivery times. Yeah. Like, you gotcha. know, they call you up on like Christmas Eve. <laughs> They're like, we and need, you got to go. We, we need like seven Trinities full. Yeah. <laughs> Sammy Lowe's of potatoes. Come yeah. And you're like, okay, well, yeah, this is enough of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? The, 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 a lot of the price was dictated through them. Yeah. So, you know, it's in, in the difference of grain marketing where it's, I wouldn't call it free market, but it's, yeah. you know, you're able to have that control yeah, yeah, of where absolutely. you're selling and where you're marketing your grain yeah. and, uh, and when. So that was another sort of caveat yeah. why we got out of it too. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Going back to the first day, like the first seat, like, I mean, we had two, oh, yeah. it would two 20 acre fields of potatoes and yeah. like, yeah, like you going back and forth, but you go to like the last season or like, you know, the cut, you know, last four or five seasons of potatoes, like the amount of equipment, uh, not so many people, but the equipment used to like clean them and like get all the rocks out and that sort of thing to going to the first year we had potatoes. It was literally the truck would go into the field, get a truckload of potatoes off the digger, come back. It would go down to a sorting table and it's sorting table is just lined with people. Yeah, And then it went up into another sorting table, which had more people on it. And then it went into the truck that went to the, uh, then went to McCain or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy. Well, yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, like from our first one, it, if you remember this is at the field we call the blue shed mm-hmm. and, um, that was our first pivot and everything else, but it was like two 40 foot long conveyors. Yep. End to end. Yeah. And like 60 people just sorting potatoes yeah. and, and then, like, like again, like fast forward, we came up to um, we had a, a sand machine, yeah, which blew silica on it to take yeah. the dirt off them and clean them, and the the trucks would back up to what we call like it was the clod hopper, so it was a sizer with star tables and everything else on it, yeah, and uh, three stingers coming off of the that were the we'd back up three trucks at a time, yeah, yeah, and yeah, it was it turned into quite the operation because yeah. we were like in season. Um, the crew was probably around that 10 to 12 guys like full yeah. time yeah uh, for in between both operations and then as soon as like harvest time came it was like 40 people yeah like so every year we're hiring like 20 seasonal employees you yeah know, 25 seasonal employees and yeah it, <laughs> that in <laughs> itself is like that's fun yeah <laughs> oh man yeah like the yeah. type where the paycheck comes along and you don't see them for two three days well i mean yeah. not many people are, are sitting around all year going you know what I'm going to wait for that potato <laughs> harvest money. When that, <laughs> put, when that potato harvest money comes, y'all going to be seeing a different me. That's Jay. right. You would be surprised. We had a couple that were just like chomping at the bit. When, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was a couple that were there year after year. But uh, for the other 98% of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got to yeah. find them. And it's yeah, hard right. in this industry for sure, especially seasonally. Yeah. People yeah. aren't always available when you need them. Yeah. Um, you don't, yeah, And you really don't have the choice. It's kind of like you get what you get. Yeah. yeah, you got to make it work. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I mean, it, it, even even in grain farming, it's it, it, it's that's always a struggle. Is trying to find drivers, is trying to find you know capable operators, and all that kind of stuff. It's so it's not just there. It's I think it's with everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, for sure. Every season in agriculture, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So the time I want to keep talking about the farm. Maybe we'll come back to it in memories there. Um, but um, after the farm you decided that you wanted a career change out of the farm. And I think that was a great move on your behalf because not only did you get the experience with like the equipment and all that kind of stuff, but like, yeah, you were a customer, you know, and got to empathize. So I mean, the empathy that you have for our customers now is like tenfold to what I have is, I mean, yeah, you just, you were in it. Right. So the return to Mazer group was, was it a year and a half ago? A year ago. It was, uh, I was started, January 4th of last year. So just over a year yeah, ago. Just over a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, coming back into it. So. Yeah. And took a and took a job in the PLM department yep. and, uh, uh, servicing the uh servicing Roymore and Watrous. Yep, that's right. Yes. So currently kind of still tied into that department, but we're changing a few things, mm-hmm. restructuring if you will. Mm-hmm. Can you take us through that at all? Yeah, you know, there's uh we're we're talking about uh um kind of creating a new division within the, from the PT department in customer optimization. So what, what we're doing is uh, instead of having a dedicated demo person, you know, that's running around giving demos to everybody or that way, we're going to have, um, I guess, uh, yeah, department 
that is sole focused on equipment operations. So, you know, it, from seeding, getting in the field, leveling the drills, make sure they're calibrated, make sure that everything is absolutely bang on, ready to go in equipment terms. And also, you know, with spraying season, the same thing, uh, making sure everything's operating right and make sure the customer knows all the features and all how everything works on it. Yep. Um, and then yeah, come harvest time, like one of the big ones is for us is having those combines set up properly calibrated and get the get the uh, grain pan out and just start throwing pans and yep. making sure that there is zero throw over going. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's a huge yeah. transition and a great, a great thing that's happening for that, for the company and that, yeah, there is going to be dedicated PT people mm-hmm. and dedicated optimization people. Because I mean, like they are two jobs, you know, when you're talking about PT, you know, there's a lot of aspects in that, in that department in itself that are, you know, Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to be good at, you know, it's, da- it's data, it's data collection and all that kind of stuff. It's yeah. telematics, that sort of thing. But the optimization part of it now, which I'm excited about, I'm, and as you said, like, I mean, doing demos, knowing how to set up combines, knowing how to set up drills, yeah. knowing, you know, every, the ins and outs of a, of a sprayer and being able to show a customer that, I mean, that's just a huge part of this business, right? Like it's, it's massive. And I mean, you know what, like you could, combines can be generally set but yeah you can't tell me that there isn't a tolerance on like the grade of a well there isn't a tolerance on how each bolt is yeah so like i mean you have a general setting setting uh for the combine but yeah you really need to get in and fine tune every single one of them yeah like, not everyone's the same yeah and you know having that ability to have somebody sit in the cab with you throwing pans and just bit by bit yeah. going through every single setting dialing her in dialing it in absolutely perfect yeah. because we want we want best throughput zero throw over yeah and fast as we can yeah right yeah so, yeah. yeah and making them fucking sing man because like i'll tell you what well just as you said like i mean there's so many moving parts on a combine and i think and i think it, you know it's the 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 role of optimization i mean it's emphasized in harvest you know like i mean obviously it's good to have the knowledge and, and seeding and, and spraying but like harvest is yeah harvest is harvest and it's uh like it's amazing how much how inefficient and improperly set combine mm. can be oh absolutely and for me like getting into the field the first thing that i'm focusing i i always focus on is um the header yeah like i mean Harvest starts at the header. Yep. That's where the crop's coming in. You want, yep. like, in terms of a Mac Don or the, the Honeybee Air Flex, you want that thing absolutely floating perfectly. Yeah. Because, I mean, if, if that starts digging, you know, that's when you're breaking knives. That's when you're breaking guards. That's yeah. when belts start to slip. So yeah. start there and just work your way back. Yeah. And, yeah. You're taking stuff. a load of dirt at the front there, and it's going to go through the whole combine too, right? So, I mean. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not good. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes they're. You'll get a clump of dirt with a skunk in it, and that's no fun too. So, <laughs> has that yeah. happened to you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I'm well, sure. When I was picking rocks down in Sarnia, Ontario, I'm sure I left yeah. a skunk or two. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a rock. I ain't picking it up. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It just reminds me of the one time at the farm we're up in rivers, and and we got down to this one pivot, like we had wheat in it, and we got down to like the last couple passes yeah and we saw this skunk it kept running right back into the crop the whole way down oh no and you wouldn't believe it but like we got it down to like a sliver like two and a half feet wide and he was in there he was in there oh jesus and so we got one one of uh one of the truck drivers out there he james he's a yeah pretty, pretty funny guy and he got out there with the grain shovel and he started chasing this thing around and i was parked and what happens skunk runs right on top of my header and runs right up the feeder <laughs> no way right into the combine oh yeah so i mean we're we're figuring out like what the hell are we gonna do here yeah. and like you know after 30 minutes or so and we're looking in the ass and we're looking yeah. all through it taking panels off we're like okay this thing's gone and i jump in the combine and i go to start this oh, thing up oh, no and like have my hand on the thresher engage and yeah. just i need to check one more time <laughs> <laughs> and so I go down and pull the pull the uh, uh, the dr- the drum uh, inspection covers off, yeah. and I pull it uh, first one off, and there's two beady eyes looking at me right there, <laughs> right in front of me. And, oh my god! And it pops out, it jumps out, 
and thank goodness it didn't turn and squirt. Oh, it didn't spray. No, it didn't. Oh, no, it God. didn't. But I can like I've heard <laughs> of guys starting them up, and oh yeah, that smell just doesn't go away. No, no. it's in there. Like, yeah, for good. Yeah. And it's like it's a different smell than than what you smell when you when they get hit the, on the highway. Oh, okay. okay, it's a, it's crazy, and you think it would be the same, but it's like yeah, it's way more potent. And you're exactly right; it just oh. sticks around. And you cannot get rid of it yeah yeah and uh for the most part there's a lot of them running around out there that don't have yeah. their warning tail anymore because they'll slip <laughs> under the header and <laughs> give, her, give her a quick snip yeah yeah just a little haircut i'm but, surprised skunk isn't used to talk about you know like a, a roast to someone more like i don't you don't really call someone a skunk but that's a pretty bad bad animal it is yeah I, i've heard like, people being like yeah that guy, that guy skunked me Oh, he's yeah. oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard I've heard that one. Or yeah. this beer is skunky. Yes, yeah, yeah, so I've heard yeah, that yeah. before yeah, yeah, for right. sure. Like, yeah, so what, it is, what, it mo- is a descriptor. Head? Are you talking about moosehead? <laughs> yeah, I must be talking about moosehead. Must be moosehead or Heineken, <laughs> one of the two. Yeah. But you're right. I guess it is used as a. But like that that animal got the the shit end of the stick. No pun intended. Yeah, <laughs> um, zero <laughs> pun intended. Like that's that's your viciousness. Is I just am the worst smelling thing ever. Yeah. Oh man, I, I've I've heard of people actually, uh, like rescuing them and taking them to a vet and getting the stink glands removed i've heard of that too and apparently they make awesome house pets <laughs> i don't Appar- know if i keep uh, one around apparently i yeah. don't know i'm not testing that yeah. out yeah. yeah do you have any other crazy stories from the farm that come off the top of your head like like oh. just something something that like you never i don't know like you never thought would happen or it's like you still think of it to this day. You um, might not have any, but yeah. Well, I have one, um, <laughs> I, and I got video of this. I still have video of it, but it was uh, it was probably my second or third year there, and we were we had a piece of land just uh, down south of uh, Number One Highway, off to Number Ten, and um, it was known to be a little wet. You know, it had it, yeah. had, it had some sloughs in it, so it was. We had a couple of days of rain and, you know, we're getting behind on our spraying. So we're like, oh, you know, we'll call up uh, one of the custom guys to come do this. So we gave him that field, of course, because yeah. we, so, <laughs> we don't want to contend with this. Yeah. So um, anyways, he gets in there and I mean, it wasn't an hour before my phone started he ringing from when the- he got in the field. He's like, yeah, I'm stuck. I'm like, Okay. Shit. All right. So we sent one guy out and we had a big ni- uh, 976 first style. Yeah. Like the, the blue one. Yeah. And it, it was, it was great. It was, uh, it, it was all um, souped up, had big chrome stacks and like, oh, yeah. black tinted windows on it in the, in the lounger room there. And uh, it gets in there and needless to say, just buries it. Really? Like, oh, oh so it's sunk too. It's sunk too. So now we got a sprayer and, and a, oh, uh, and the 976. Oh, no. So, so okay, all right. What we got? So at this point, this is when um, uh, we had a T ninety sixty, and this is right when the ATI tracks came out. Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, we put these things on, and knowing me, I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah. this this is where this thing's gonna shine. <laughs> this is this is what's gonna happen. So we get out there, and we manage to get the nine seventy six out. So we back her up, sort of around on some fresh ground and everything. Get to the sprayer. Well, oh, no. <laughs> this thing ended up on top uh, on on a bunch of loon shit and filled every single track, and it just sunk. It just went wow, oh, like no. straight down. So, oh, anyways, nine seventy six is out, and you got no hardware left. Oh no, the the the, ver- the nine seventy six. We got that one out. Okay. So it hooked onto the sprayer again and got him out. So, but we have this T ninety like biggest track we got. Yeah, with with ATIs on it. Yeah, so. <laughs> I mean, we, we were trying and every time, every time we pulled on it, it would get up and up and it would just go and like straight back. Oh, really? So it would climb on top. It would would climb up, climb up. And then just the sheer weight of it, like all that dirt would go underneath of it and it would just go straight back down again. Really? So like we're scratching our heads. We're like, what the fuck are we going to do here? Yeah, Yeah. So we ended up calling, uh, uh, Dustin Redfern. Oh yeah. And he had a, he had an excavator. Okay. So we get this excavator into the field and start digging a trench and it'd do the same thing every single time. We'd build a, a ramp for it and yeah. finally, finally it'd get up to the top and sink right back down again. <laughs> I, I ended up calling a got, a got rig mats out of Verdon and really? I got them to deliver 12 like rig mats and put them in, the, put them in this trench. And so we, this thing just would not come out. No, absolutely really? not. Really? So, and yeah, like it 
So we built this ramp, laid down this rig mat, got another tractor on the front with a with a, a tow strap, and we finally got this thing out. <laughs> what I didn't tell you is this took us three days. No it way. Was three days of digging and adjusting and everything. And it was almost like having a baby because Dustin brought cigars with him on the third day. And we, all, <laughs> we, we all got this thing out and we all stopped and had a cigar. So that, that, that was a fun one. Did that, you damage a lot of crop in the meantime? Or is the, sorry, was this getting to the field with the crop? There is a li- there is a little bit of a trail left after the fact. You yeah. know? Like the, the actual trench itself was probably 150 yards long. Like That's it was, crazy. It was a football field and a half kind of deal. Wow. And how deep do you think? Um, you could, it was buried up to the step into the cab of the 9060 of the, of the 9060. Yeah. So that's what? Six feet. Oh, to the top, to the top step. Oh it yeah. Was, that's, it was, yeah, gra- that's was, six was, feet. was yeah. ground level. Jesus. That's, yeah. yeah. That's deep. Cause that, that's when it got like the, like found the base. Right. Right. Yeah. So like uh, uh, hit bedrock pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The oldest part of the Canadian shield is what we hit yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> You're going for oil at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Yeah, yeah, nice. And uh, I, I guess here <laughs> now they're all coming back. Yes, to me at it's this perfect. Point. Yeah, so, keep going. So my first year there, and Dad will get a kick out of this yeah. um, because he uh, at the end of that first year, he's like, "Son, I found you the perfect song," and it's like, <laughs> "I love you, son, but you're hard on equipment." <laughs> so, <laughs> so the first first year. Um, uh, Get there. I'm just kind of learning the ropes. Uh, the first thing I do is we had a, a uh, what was that? An 06 GMC 2500. Yeah. And I'm hooking up the gooseneck and everything else. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, big rig in it here. Let's go. Yeah. And uh, go deliver this load of seed and stuff. And we get back to the yard and I pull in. And, uh, you know, doing my due diligence, I get out, put, <laughs> put the landing gears down. I'm hooking the wires and everything. And it being a gooseneck you know, hitches right in the middle of the box and, you know, lift everything up. And just without even thinking, I walk back to the driver's tailgate. Driver's seat, I just, boom, throw the tailgate up. Oh, you and put, so it was down. It was down and I just put the tailgate up. Yeah. And this thing was in four wheel drive and I just pulled her straight. And I mean, you could not fold a tailgate more perfectly in half than what I did. Like it was, oh, no. it, it was a perfect lawn chair, like an yeah. L. So anyways, that, that was, that was the first one. And then we are, we're, we're, we're planting potatoes at this time. Uh, so I'm driving one of the tri drives and usually we have murder automatic transmissions. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Well, this one had an eaten automatic, so it had like a clutch, uh, brake and gas on it. So, you, but it was an automatic, it was automatic. So you'd have to clutch into first gear. Really? And, and then it goes automatic. Yeah. Well, I don't know what the hell happened, but I was trying to just nudge forward a bit and my foot slipped and I had my foot on the brake and the gas and everything was pressing at the same time. And I took that drive shaft. I just corkscrewed it. I mean, really? I, we, we took this thing off and it was like, it was like a drill bit. This is <laughs> So how do you pull that off? Only you could pull that off. Only, I, only I could pull this <laughs> off. So, <laughs> so the next one was uh, we were getting the drill drill all set up, and uh, we're about a week away from seeding at this point. So yeah. you got um, you got um, Jeff McManus there, who is our seeder operator. Yeah, and and he's also a combine operator for us. And uh, we're unfolding the uh, the drill as an SD five fifty, and they had these locking pins in them. And you, when you go to fold out, you put these pins in the unlock position and you're good. <laughs> well, I was looking at him back over at the tractor and I pull with my other hand, pulling out the uh, pin and I put it right back in the lock spot. Like, cause I was looking at him. I, yeah. I just didn't move my arm enough yeah. up to put it in the unlock spot. So I'm like, yep, bring her down. And you could just hear this thing come down and then, and there's a safety chain like connecting the other gangs together. Yeah. Well, I don't know what like I don't know if it was kryptonite this chain was made of. I don't know what it was. It, it was it's supposed to break. Yeah. It didn't. And it, it definitely took, did not break. It definitely did not break. And it 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 took that gang and it bent it about two feet down. Oh <laughs> so, my god. So there was that. And this is all in the same season. Like this is all in like a. It's all your first year. Yeah, this Man. is like an all in a. Don't one. try to convince me you left farming. You got booted by your dad. <laughs> 
because of the cost 11 years of though. equipment. <laughs> It, well, fair enough, it, fair it, enough. It, it took him 11 years to get the courage to get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so is that. And uh, oh, there has to be, I, there was another one in there. What else did I, oh yeah, it was the um, <laughs> potato, seeding potatoes. So we had, we have a, um, like a telehandler with a, a massive, uh, like as wide as a planter is to load the planter. So we put yep. seed Oh yeah, yeah, yep, yep. And there was a conveyor that just swung back and forth. So the seed truck would back up and it would load into the conveyor and go swing back and forth. And uh, uh, we were moving fields. So I, I, uh, <laughs> I get in the tractor that has the conveyor hooked up to it and I'm pulling away. And, you know, I'd like every, everything is like, it should have happened two hours ago. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Everybody's in, in, in that mode. So I'm pulling away and don't even look at this conveyor that's behind me and the seed trucks right there. And I make a sharp turn and the end of that conveyor just piles into the side of the front, oh front no. of the semi and damn near ripped the hood off of it. Oh, wow. Oh yeah. So like <laughs> there's fiberglass <laughs> everywhere. And hot shot in it out of and the I'm field. just like, oh, Yo. okay. So the rule, the rule was, is that whenever something happens yeah. that you have to buy a bottle for the guys. Yeah. Like that's how, how yeah. it goes. So at the end of uh, that seeding season, I bought two Texas Mickeys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I had to buy the guys like nine liters of alcohol. Oh, so you're man. like an insurance broker's dream. That's right. right. Yeah. They're all yeah. lining up outside Andrew's house. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, yeah, and, it's a, <laughs> and to this and to this day, the the brokers still talk about me. Yeah, that's you know right. What? I'm yeah. just like I'm yeah. an industry ghost. Yeah, he's a legend. Yeah. 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 This right. guy's a legend. <laughs> Nobody's made more money in the insurance yeah. industry than looking after Andrew Mazur. <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything that I heard like like that got down, but I think you I think you nailed them all there. Um, yeah, it's a farm is such a great like. I mean, it's it wouldn't be working at a farm if you didn't create stories like that. No, absolutely. Absolutely. It was, it was a lot of fun. And you know what, again, like you, 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 um, form these bonds with these guys and I mean, yeah. we're always poking at each other and sure, you know, yeah. giving each other shit and everything else like that. But, uh, you know, what? I, I guess going back is like when I say I miss it, miss it quite often is I find that farming is the only, I guess, industry or sector you can look at what you've done on a year-to-year -year basis yeah. and visually see where you can get better or what you can change and it's like sure. you got that instant gratification of putting your crop in tending to it watching it grow yeah. and then really just hands-on like yeah. tangibly feeling the uh gra grain that came off and seeing yeah. it yeah and you know, there's something so satisfying about that. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know what, um, I'm a, I'm from the generation of like instant gratification. So am I. Yeah. And yeah. there it is right there. Yeah. 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 You can see it, you can touch it, you can feel it. And yeah, it's, uh, there's no other industry like it, man. That's why, uh, yeah. Like, I mean, we were staying in it. If you're staying in it, you're just in a different, different, uh, part of it, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah good so stuff. so yeah. Hopefully, I'll be maybe I'll be able to transition over to that optimization team. Yeah, and you know retain some of that being in the field. And there you go, running equipment and there you go, and you know what, putting pilers into side of people's vehicles and <laughs> yeah, ripping right. tailgates off. <laughs> I believe else. those days are over. Uh, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't I haven't broken too much stuff. Yeah, the bad stuff then. the bad stuff has to happen to well, you, and that's how you learn. Well, I got it all out right on the first month. Yeah, which, which is the great part about it. You yeah. know, like I said, not, then you know the next uh, ten years were just easy sailing. There you go. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> nice. Good yeah. stuff. I'm looking over across the table. Are you on this hydrogen water bandwagon? I am. You know what? Instagram got me yet again. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. You know, those reels, you know what? And, uh, and it, anything that Joe Rogan talks about, I'm pretty well sold. So like I, you know, I'm on the AG one, I'm on the hydrogen water. <laughs> you Have you got I, on I, it? I, I, you cold plunging? Um, uh, uh, what the alpha brain? Yes, yes, I have that. Okay, I, I do okay, have that. You do buy everything. I, yeah, I do, I do. And then, um, are you cold plunging? I really want to get one. I want to try one. Yeah, I've, I've heard. I've, I've, I've heard water. like, but I that, know, that, I know uh, Creo is doing them right now, um, based out of uh, Saskatchewan. Okay, and they're uh, the, a lot of people are doing it, and apparently there's these benefits releasing good fats in your body. Yeah creating uh some court using up cortisol or creating cortisol in your brain yeah well it'll be, redu be reducing cortisol because cortisol is a stress hormone correct sorry yeah, yeah. so 
Um, like, I, I don't know if you see it on camera here. Like, for all I know, this is just a bottle that has a blue light and a fan on it. <laughs> like, I, 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 I don't know if it's actually doing anything, but you know what? Maybe it's a placebo effect and it just like, that's right. I, I feel better. I feel good. I feel good. You know, it's just bubbles being yeah. produced. <laughs> that's right. Guys, I've been, I've been on obviously a few years of, of uh, getting older and body starting to break down and I get caught up in all these rules on Instagram. You know, you got to fast. Yeah. No, you can eat carbs. They're not, they're not the danger. You got to stay away from fat. No, you can eat all the fat you want. You just don't want sugars. Yeah. You don't want, you can have sugars, yeah. natural sugars, not complex sugars. Yeah. yeah. And you can't drink anything these days. No, like it, no it has to be water, but even in the water, well, yeah, people no, are like, no, oh, there's it, fluoride in your if, water. Yeah, you're right. Yourself. If it's not hydrogen water, I mean, you shouldn't be drinking it. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so I need a blue blue light in the fan. That's so right. I can't even keep up. <laughs> I can't even keep up, man. No, I think I'm just gonna keep yeah keep doing what I'm doing, which yeah. is mediocre health. Yeah. At the end of the day, all you've learned is don't eat and don't drink. Exactly. <laughs> Anything. <Right>. Anything. <laughs> yeah. The um, but the the cold the cold plunging like um. I, I I'm quite interested in. Uh, yeah, man, you should just try like turning the turning your shower on to full cold. Like, I mean, it's just okay. I'm sure it's like super beneficial, and and, and maybe I'm being a bit of a pussy here, but like, it's freezing it, cold water. It is. Yeah. Have you ever I, accidentally gotten into a cold shower that you thought was hot? Oh yeah. I turn in. I turn into a child. When that <laughs> yeah. My life flashes before my eyes. Yeah. So my buddy is like, "Hey, man, why don't you get into this cold plunging?" I'm like. That is wild. Yeah, and, and it's people crazy. showing videos of themselves, and they just look terrorized. Yeah, but they're all screaming for it after. So it's yes. like putting yourself in like immense discomfort yep. to feel better later, which I yep. think is the form of any type of progress. But well, it's like yep. exercising. You know, half the time you're putting yourself through torture to yeah be better. Yeah, exactly. So um, I I don't know what to jump on here, but um, it might be an episode. Well, the, the other thing yeah, is we might is need that, some clarity here. The uh -huh. other thing is, is that like, I mean, it, there's been cultures and civilizations, you know, over time that have done this, like, like, even, you know, go to the, the Swedes, they go to sauna and then in the snow, sauna, snow, like it's mm. that, it's that extreme yeah. temperature change that, yeah. that is supposedly. How the beneficial. fuck do you know what the Swedes do? <laughs> I, that, I know. Well. <laughs> I just I, know I, I, I'm a I, world traveler. Okay? I, well, yes, yes. <laughs> you, know, you, you know what? I've been to Minot, and I know these things. Um, you know, so uh, the ancient did, Swedish did, tradition did, of well, sauna well, to John, snow. John, John being in Manitoba, you know that the inner lake is all Scandinavian. Yeah, like, so I have some knowledge of this. No, but it, 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 it's 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 when I look at something, I get I get super hyper fixated, like sure, hyper fixated yeah. on things. So I get I'm that. just I like, totally get that. Yeah. Let's hit the internet and start doing searches and yeah. reading stuff. So yeah. and Joe Rogan, yeah, and Joe Rogan. <laughs> no, honestly, and Joe Rogan. After all said and done, and everyone's trying to learn what's best, as long as people are striving uh, to be better, I got yeah. no I got no judgment on it. However, no. you know it's important for everyone to find whatever works for them. Yes, yeah. I just haven't found that yet because yeah. I get heavily confused when I'm hearing all this stuff. So a lot of sides mm -hmm. to every story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I a hundred percent agree with your statement there. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it has, as long as you're trying like good on you, I, yeah. yeah, I'm not here to make fun of you. It's just like yeah. a lot of, it's just, there's so much stuff out there, you know? And yeah. so, but if it's working for you, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for you. I don't know. I just, as long, as long as you have a vegetable and uh, a potato or on your plate and a big piece of beef or yeah. pork or whatever. It, you got all of them there. It's good. That's right. That's all you need. Yeah. 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 Just keep around it and that's it. Yeah. Burn more calories than you eat and you're yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any questions for Andrew, producer Jay? Uh I I want I got a question for you guys. What's it like growing up with knowing that your family owned owned a business that was very yep. successful? Yep. And you is, always is very sorry, successful. sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> not past tense is but in that time you knew that it was um did you guys always know you were going to go into the family business or did you want to carve your own path was there did you always know that option was there i've, I've just always wondered this because I, a lot of people don't grow up mm -hmm. with opportunities to kind of join a family business mm -hmm. and yeah, i just want to i just want to know the perception um, of that growing up like did you kind of know like this is what i'm gonna do it's already carved out for me or 
were you like, ah, maybe I won't do it? No, I, I, I didn't know if I wanted to be here. Um, you know, I'd like, I, uh, for me, I, you know, a young kid, I just, one thing I want to do is be in the music industry, you know, producing or something like that. But, um, you know, really in Brandon, there wasn't too many opportunities no. for it. No. Um, took a little stint out West and, uh, worked as, um, a uh, lifty and instructor out there at, at Lake Louise and really enjoyed that. Love the mountains, but you know, it took a time for me to come back and then see, the, I guess, the development of the group and the and our dealer complex and and wanting to be a wanting to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you went out and saw and did other things, but it was it was the fact that you came came back with a new set of eyes and you're looking yeah. at this and like I want to be a part of this. Yeah. And so I, I you want- were you were never pressured by the family to say you we want you part of this. Or- do, you want, do you want to take this one, John? <laughs> Um, <laughs> sorry if I'm going too deep. No, you're not. No, 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 no you're not going no, too no. deep. I think like I'm, uh, you know, this business is, you know, it's dad's baby, you know, and he's worked so hard and he's so good at it. And obviously he wants to see it like he's second generation, right? He wants okay. to see the business, uh, you know, he wants to see the business continue to grow and the family be involved in it. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't say I don't. I, I didn't never felt uh, pressured, or say like pressure, like you got to do this. But certainly, um, it was always it was always pointed out to me as a very good option. Yeah, <laughs> you fair, know, fair, you fair, know, yeah. and so and also just to talk about your um, comment about carving out your own path. Um, yes. Uh, everybody wants to, to carve their own path. Um, we got involved, we got fully involved in the business in 2005 and um, you're always going to have that stigma as the boss's son, right? So um, I think one of the big things is, is yeah, like, I mean, carving, for me, carving my own path was just putting my head down, listen lots, you know, get into a position where like I can, you know, my biggest... Uh, I guess my first major position was in the construction side of things, which was super nice because dad wasn't involved with construction. So um, anything I did in ag, I was Bob's son. Mm-hmm. Whereas anything I did in construction, I was John. So that was the, that really allowed me to carve my own path nice. within the group, but still be John. Um, and then coming out here to Regina, getting back into the ag stuff. Um, yes, Bob was born out here, but he had never worked out here and worked with the customers. So again, allowing me to carve my own path as mm-hmm. John and not Bob's son. So, and yeah, I'm always in a learning phase. I'm always like listening. Um, and yeah. And it's been a hell of a ride so far. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I hope that answered the question. It does. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and I, I guess for me, like there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat and yep. that, that was spending my time at the farm. Yeah. And then, you know, i really understanding it from that side of it. And yep. then being like, okay, well, now that I understand agriculture more and, you know, it lived it and, you know, it enjoyed it, you know, breathed it. Yeah. And coming back here now, there's a whole new perspective on it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I remember when you went out to the farm, like, like dad told me, Andrew's going to go away because, I mean, Don's coming up for retirement. I thought it was awesome. But like two days later, Andrew's called me up, yakking my ear off about grain prices. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I don't fucking care, man. But yeah. like, but like, just like you said yeah. about the, you know, the Facebook stuff, like you really do immerse yourself yeah. in whatever you're doing. And like, it was in a couple of days where it was, you seem to be right at home and you, you owned it for 11 years. So good on you, man. Well, and you know, yeah. And it was, you know, th- the really in part to all the great um, shows and expositions and things that go on that. Uh, so anyway, sorry. Um, and yeah, and just, just uh, getting in any seminar that I could and just sort of working yep. my way in that way. And yep. yeah. Well, Andrew, I really, really appreciate you coming today. Well, thank this you. This was awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, yeah. it's uh, I, I'm, such a big fan of uh what what you created here Thanks, and man. uh yeah i think it's it's we're gonna see a lot of good guests and yeah. hear a lot of good stories and uh talks and that's really what it's all about yeah this is not the last time you're gonna be here it's like we'll get you back on i don't know maybe it's a family affair maybe we get dad in here but you know oh maybe, that'd be nice or uh well, i hey, want well, i want, want to get you back to hear more about this optimization oh, stuff yeah, yeah. Yeah, as as we learn more about it, and that's right. Everything yeah. else, but yeah, well, maybe maybe the twenty fifth should be uh, Bob, you and I. Yeah, 
could be get do, pops do, in do, before do, then, yeah. do the do the round table and then he could be number twenty. Yeah. Yeah, that's right away. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Hey, it, gets, it doesn't make me nervous talking about it, but it's like yeah, it's gonna be a big episode. It will be, yeah. Yeah, oh, um, yeah that's it's it's gonna be an interesting panel, that's for sure. That's right. Yeah. Okay, buddy. Thank you so much for coming and we'll see you soon. Chat soon. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Thank you.